Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and welcome to my tutorial video. This tutorial video is going to be on open foam and the shot sleeve modeling in open foam and uh, about what a shot sleeve is and how you actually uh, look into it or why you want to look into it. I'm gonna go in, uh, I'm gonna address that in a minute but let me just show you in the beginning of this tutorial what you'll be able to do once you follow my instructions all the way to the end and you will be able to produce a video just like the one that I'm showing you just like right now as you can see here in the picture this resembles a very very or basic shot sleeve or maybe just a slice of one shot sleeve. You have a very coarse mesh, the two faces, air and melt, of course, and you got the in-gate system over here and uh, the piston over there. And um, once we start the situ uh, simulation, you can see that the piston is moving inwards towards the right side of the picture. And we do this by moving the mesh in open form. And I'm also going to show you how to set up such a mesh motion solver, one particular to be exact. And uh, before we, if we look at the video one more time, we can also see that the melt is being moved by the not seeing seeable piston in just the way we want it. And um, it pushes the melt all the way out of the in-gate system into what is here attached, which is in most cases the casting. But let me show you why this is important. And um, I'm going to do this by doing a quick Google search on high pressure die casting. This should lead to one video, which is also on YouTube. And this YouTube video, you can see uh, the very basic steps of high, high pressure die casting. We have the spraying of the lubricant first. Then you pour the melt into the short sleeve and this sort of tube or tunnel or filling chamber or whatever you want to call it is what I call the shot sleeve. You got the piston right here. Once uh, the charging of the shot sleeve with the melt is done, you'll see that the piston moves actually forward <coughs> with a constant velocity until the melt is right at the end gate system, which is about here, and then the what we call the shot will occur, which is when you inject the melt into the die with a very high velocity, and uh, you do this to do uh, to fill uh, the die at a very short period of time. And uh, before we now take out the casting, <coughs> you apply the after pressure. But this video will only be on the on the fluid mechanics processes that take part in here inside the shot sleeve. And um, if we look at the video once more, now you should be able to recognize some small similarity uh, between what you saw in the YouTube video and this, to admit, very simple model. But I believe it does the trick. And once you followed my instructions all the way to the end, and you are able to do your own model just like this, you can, of course, just switch to a more advanced mesh and model a real shot sleeve. Okay, so how do we start? And uh, in open foam, it's the nice thing that open foam always comes along with an abundance of tutorials. And um, the most important, or one important question to ask yourself at the beginning is um, what kind of solver you want to use. In this case, I chose to use the compressible interdime foam. The dime in the name compressible into dime foam means that it actually can handle moving meshes, which is something that we need in this case, as you saw in the video already, because the cells in here, in the moving area, or in the area where the piston moves, they get compressed more and more towards the end, and we need a solver to compute this compression of the cells. All right, so if we now want to get started, it's Always good to open the terminal and initialize the open foam environment. I set up my shell to do the initialization just like that. 
and um, then it's always good to navigate to the run directory and create a case folder first which I do here by typing make, make dear and I call this case folder short sleeve tutorial alright I told you that we were gonna use an already existent tutorial to build upon that and uh, in order to do that it is always good to copy this tutorial first we do this by cp-r then we use the environment open foam environment variable foam tutorials tutorials it's on the multi-phase <coughs> compressible interdime foam ras and the tutorial we're going to use is called Slushing Tank 2D. Alright, and the star here in this command indicates that I want to copy every file and every folder in this folder that is called Slushing Tank 2D. And I want to copy it into the folder that I just created. And I can do this, for example, by just typing exclamation mark dollar, which will put the last argu argument I used before just right in here and this argument was shot sleeve tutorial enter and you can see here it replaced the exclamation mark dollar with the actual shot sleeve tutorial string so if we now move and uh, navigate to the shot sleeve tutorial folder we do this by CD shot sleeve tutorial and press LS so we can see that we have all the files necessary for doing the slushing tank 2d simulation case. Okay, if you don't have any idea of what this tutorial is doing, then it's always good to look at the all around script first. I'm going to use gedit for doing this. gedit all run opens the, uh, the all run and you can see here, for example, that this tutorial starts with using an M4 file. M4 is known to be a very old script language, which comes along with some benefits and I'm going to show you later on how you can actually employ these benefits for your own purpose and it creates this m4 use this m4 file blockmeshdict.m4 in order to create the real blockmeshdict uh, blockmesh is the um, meshing tool that is incorporated into open foam which is might be to some engineers in particular a bit of a strange concept as they are more used to start with a CAD model and then build the mesh basically based on the CAD model. Uh, the developers of OpenFoam, however, chose to uh, use another system, and this block mesh system. You basically create a block mesh based on, well, let's name them several vertices that you create and define in space and uh, use these vertices to constrain your mesh. But uh, more on that later. They use this uh, M4 file to create the real block mesh dict. Then they use the, the block meshing tool utility in OpenFoam to create the mesh. They copy the uh, alpha water or original file into alpha water. They use the set fields in order, in order to just alter this alpha water file. And finally, they run the application which they read in from the control dict. Okay, so having that said, to just get a feeling of how this tutorial works, it will be good to just run the all run one time and look at the results in Paraview. Start with the block mesh, set fields, and now finally it's running the compressible into Dime foam on this case file and it to see that it's actually working, you can use this nautilus window and uh, move to the case folder, which I named short sleeve tutorial. And you can see here that time steps, more and more time steps are being added in the process. And uh, that actually indicates that your solver is currently running. I think this solves up to 40 seconds. I'm not going to wait that long. Um, I'm going to in the meantime, open Parafoam already, just in order to um, show you how this case behaves. And I'm going to do this with uh, using the Control Z. This puts the all run, this 
holds the all run script for a moment, and if I type bg, then it puts it in the back. So we'll continue solving. As you can see here, time steps are still being added, but I got my terminal back in order to execute other commands, and I'm going to type parafoam in order to have a look at the results that are already being that were already been written out to the hard drive. <coughs> Takes a moment. Now you can see the normal pair of view interface, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna no, not gonna look too much into it. I'm just gonna go for the alpha water, which is basically the most important field to read in if you just want to look at the distribution of the two faces. Hit apply, and I, as you can see here, we got the tank. Got the tank. And if I now select alpha water here, I have the distribution of the alpha water in the first time step. If I now click on, I now click on the play icon, I can see what actually happens in the tutorial, and we can see that we have an oscillating or sloshing, as the creators of the tutorial called it, a tank, yeah, where you have melt at the bottom. And uh, the more this keeps running, the more the melt splashes around in the entire domain. Well, in particular to people that are not super familiar with OpenFoam, it might look very far away from what we actually want to do. But uh, in the following, I'm going to show you uh, how you can modify this very case to um, a case that is actually of use for us for modeling the process in the short sleeve and create the video that I showed you in the beginning of this video. Um, just one more thing, if I want to include the time steps that were added after I started the Parafilm script, uh, I can just hit it refresh times and then I have, I'll have more time steps present and I can look at this simulation all the way until the end, or at least until the moment uh, where the solver is right now, until the last time step it wrote to the hard drive. Okay, but enough of that. You can close, close Parafilm. And uh, the first step for us to do on our way to create a video just like this will be to create mesh and um, the second part of this video tutorial will be about to do just that namely to, to alter the block mesh dict or the M4 file that creates the block mesh dict um, from producing in a way that it doesn't anymore produce a shape like this but instead produces a shape like this. This will be the content of part two of this video tutorial and I would like to conclude part one of my video tutorial. This is actually part one out of five uh, sequential videos for now and I'll see you back at the next video. Thank you very much.